Hello everybody, welcome to the JavaScript course. In this video, I'm going to discuss the focusing and blurring of elements in JavaScript. Some of the elements allow users to interact with, for example, the text box, the radio button, the hyperlink, and so on. So for those elements, we can use the focus and blur events on them. We can also use the focus and blur methods to generate the focusing and blurring events. We can also add tab index to allow the focusing or blurring on ordinary elements so that the elements that this allow focusing can be focused. Finally, we will talk about the focus in and focus out events which allow bubbling, unlike those focus and blur events that disallow bubbling. Now, let us see the HTML file first. The HTML file has a lot of elements this time. First, I have a title here, and then I link the CSS file to the HTML file. So the CSS file is called styles.css, okay. And in the body part, I have a number of things. First, I have some input boxes, okay. And I have some divisions to show you some prompts later. After that, I have a table. The table has a lot of um, table data here in some table rows. After that, I have an ordered list. Okay. I also link the HTML file to the JavaScript file. So the JavaScript file is called my script.js, which is put in the JS folder. Okay. So the appearance of the web page is like this. Okay. The input boxes followed by the table, followed by the ordered list, okay. And for the CSS file, I want to decorate my table a little bit. So I specify the table it itself and the table data by mentioning the border involved. So you can see the borders are generated by the CSS file, okay. Now let us go to the JavaScript file. In order for me to use the script mode, I have to say use strict on the first line of the JavaScript file. And then let's talk about today's topic, focusing and blurring. So in JavaScript, we have focus and blur events. So how can we make these two events by using the user input? Actually, we can use a mouse or a tab key to change the focus of the element that allows users to interact with. That means we can use a mouse or we can use the tab key to focus or blur those elements. For example, the text box, the radio button, the button and the hyperlink and so on. And then the focused element will have a thicker border. So we can see that the focused one will have a little bit of change in the appearance. Okay. So in my example here, I have already picked up a number of elements. So some text and some text to refer to the first two input boxes, okay. And some prompt and some prompt to refer to the two divisions underneath the input boxes, okay. So now I'm going to interact with the two input boxes that allow us to do the interaction. So now I'm going to do the focusing and blurring of the two elements that allow us to do so, which are the two input boxes, okay. So I can set up two event listeners. The first event listener is doing the focus event and the other one is doing the blur event. So when I really focus a certain element, like the, my text box here, I can just uh, make a certain anonymous function. And the division here wants to show the inner HTML as follows, ready to enter text. So I want to tell people that when you have focused a certain input box, you can do the input now. So if the text box is blurred, that means if it loses its focus, I can do something else. I can use an anonymous function to do so. So I have to put the event object into the argument. And then when I have the event object, which can sense the blurring, I can just tell the division to say that not ready to enter text because your text box is not on focus yet. So let us see the result now. 
save, reload. So when I press my mouse button on the first input box, you can see that the division has told me to enter the text because it is already ready to do so. So when I just um, click on anywhere else on the web page, that element will lose its focus. And at that time, you can see that the text box is no longer ready to enter the text. Okay, just like the uh, event mentioned here. Okay, the focused event and the blur event. Okay. In addition to using the focus and blur event handlers, we can use the focus and blur methods on an element. So we can make a focus on an element or remove the focus from an element. So what does it mean by that? Let us see an example. Suppose I've already picked up the text box, which is the first one here. And now I want to add an event listener to listen to the key up event. So when the key up event is happening, I would just like to do the show prompts function. And now I'm going to tell you the way to show the um, function content. Now you can see the function content now. If the text box dot value equals A, B, C, D, E, F, that means if the user enters A, B, C, D, E, F, the other text box can be focused by using the focused method. Okay. And then the division tell something to you now saying that you can enter the second text box or if the first text box value is now uvwxyz then i would like to just blur the first text box that means i want to lose the focus of that text box and then the division wants to say that you have to enter the first text box again that means you didn't input the stuff correctly when you want to add some content in the second text box or else I just say nothing in the uh, prompt division, okay? So that is my idea. So what will be the result of th this uh, code snippet? Let us see. Save. Reload. So let me try to enter something. A, B, C, D, E, F. Okay, you can see that, oh, um, the second text box is already getting the focus. Just like here, okay? And then I can just enter something in the second text box as told by the prompt. Okay. So how about the case when I enter something else like UVWXYZ? Okay, you can see that the focus of the first element is blurred. That means you can't see the thicker border. Okay. So you can also see that the statement here becomes enter first text box again. That means I'm not able to satisfy the requirement shown in the function because I entered something that triggers the blurring action. Okay. So if I enter something else, you can see that the second division shows nothing. Okay. So you, you can see that the function is able to recognize the values and do the focusing of blurring accordingly, okay? The next part to talk about is the tab index. So we already know that there are only some types of elements that can do the focus or blurring, okay? So is it possible to allow all the elements to become focused? Yes, it is possible. Even though those elements are not intended to be focused, we can still make them have the ability to be focused or blurred. For example, the table content, the division, or the list, and so on. These things are not intended to be focused or blurred, but we can make them have this kind of ability. The idea is to set up the tab index. So we set the index so that the elements can be focused in a particular order. That means the tab index has to follow some order so that the computer knows which element would focus first and which element would be focused later. The focus will take place for those elements with the tab index first. So you can have other elements that are not having the tab index. In that case, JavaScript will try to focus those elements with the tab index first, followed by those without the tab index. Okay. Then the elements without tab index will be focused following the natural order of focusing. 
the natural order here just means the uh, normal flow of the uh, HTML elements from top to bottom and from left to right in general. So the focusing order specified by the tab index can be something like this. The tab index will start with 1, and then we go to 2, 3, and so on. But we have two additional numbers that are allowed to become the tab index. First, we talk about 0 here. If the tab index is 0, it just means that the element is able to do the focusing, but in natural order. That means that element will be just like ordinary elements without a specific positive tab index specified. Okay. And if the tab index is minus 1, we cannot use the tab key to focus it, but we can just use the focus method to make a focus of that element. It is a bit abstract, so I'm going to use an example to illustrate these two specific indices, as well as those ordinary indices allowed for the tab index. So here I have already picked up some data on my table. So you can see data 1, data 2, data 3 up to data 6. They refer to just the first table data, the second table data, and so on. Okay. So my data 1 refers to the first data element. My data 4 refers to the fourth data element, and so on. Okay. Now I'm going to set the tab index of these elements. I can use my data one dot tab index. Okay. Here, this I has to be a capital letter when we do the property. Okay. So tab index becomes three. So it would be the third element to be focused. So how about data four here? I can have another tab index. So, um, word four will be focused a bit earlier than the, uh, first data, okay? Because you can see 2 is smaller than 3. And how about data 5? Okay, tab index becomes 1. That means data 5 is the earliest data to be focused, even earlier than uh, word 4 here, okay? And how about data 2? I use 0 as the tab index for data 2. Two here, okay. We will see the effect of tab index being equal to zero later. And how about my data six, which is the last element here? The tab index is equal to minus one. So we can see that I have already used um, so many possible tab indices to play with the uh, focusing and blurring. So let us try to do the focusing by using the tab key. Save. Reload. So let me try to press the tab key. So you can see that the first element to be focused is just the data 5 here, which has the uh, tab index of 1. Okay, And you will expect that the next one will be um, word 4. And you can see that when I press the tab key again, you can go to another element with tab index equals 2, okay. And then the third one will be just data 1 shown here, okay. And let me try to press the tab key again. You can see that I just go to the natural order. The first text box, the second text box, and then number 2. Data number two. You see that for data number two, I have a tab index of zero. That means this one just follows the natural order of the focusing, okay? And let me try again for another uh, tab key. You can see that I already leave the web page to do the focusing of the browser buttons already, okay? So you can see that um, data six here is never focused because I set it as minus one. I cannot just use the tab key to focus it. If I want to focus um, data six, which has a tab index of minus one, how can I do so? I have to use a program to do so. 
okay, I just say my data six dot focus. So you can see that I can just use the uh, JavaScript program to make a focusing of the element with tab index equals minus one. So let us see the uh, whole process again. Save. Reload. Okay. When I just um, reload the page, you can see that word sex has been focused already because I used the program to do the focusing of that element with tab index equals minus one. And what will be the next element to do the focusing if I just press the tab key again? You can see that I just go to the natural ordering. The first text box, the second text box, and then uh, data two, which follows the natural ordering. And then I will go to the controls on my browser already. I have left the web page already. Okay. So you can see that the focus method here is able to help me focus some elements with tab index equals minus one. Okay. And this action will try to override the original tab index so that those indices that are able to be focused initially will fail and we will just do the uh, natural ordering of the focusing after having the uh, focusing of uh, certain elements with tab index equals minus one. Okay. The next topic to discuss is the bubbling of the focus and blur events. Actually, they are not allowed to bubble. That means we cannot have event dedication to achieve. Okay. What does it mean by that? It means that we cannot assign event handlers on the ancestor to control the focusing and blurring of all the descendants. Okay. If we want to do so, we have to use other two events called focus in and focus out because they can bubble up. Okay. So let us see an example of this situation. Now I want to pick up the list called some list and it refers to this ordered list. Okay. And we know that an ordered list is not allowed to be interact with by using the tab key in general. Okay. So if we want to allow the focusing of the list content, we have to assign the tab index. Also, I want to pick up all the list elements and store them in a collection called my points. Okay, so I use the query selector all method to pick up all the LI elements. Okay. And how can I assign the tab indices on the list content? Let me show you my way now. Okay, I can use this approach. I want to assign the tab index to each of the LI elements. That means I want to assign each of those elements with a tab index. The tab index is just uh, in the so-called natural order. Uh, so the first element will be focused first, followed by the second one, third one, and the fourth one, finally. Okay, that's why I would say I plus one here. The index starts with zero. So zero plus one means one. So this one will have one being the tab index. This one will have two being the tab index and so on. Okay. And after I have assigned the tab indices to each of the list elements, I can use the focus in and focus out events to help me do the event delegation. So for the focus in event, I want to make use of an anonymous function to help me do something. So I have to pass the event object into the argument of the anonymous function. And after that, I want to pick up the event target, which is just meaning the list elements that I have made focus on. Okay. And I want to change the background color to yellow. That means when a certain element is already focused, I want to make the background color to be yellow. Okay. On the other hand, if the focus is lost, it will trigger the focus out event. And in this case, I want to do something else. So I set up an anonymous function and then I put the event object into the argument of the anonymous function. And the background color of the element being focused out will turn to light green. So this is the idea. 
so I just use the focus in and focus out event to act on my list. Okay, so I just put something on top of the list elements. So my list just refers to the uh, ordered list. So it means that I just put the event handlers on the ordered list rather than on every single element in the list. Okay. So it means that I'm trying to do event delegation. So let us see the result. Save. Reload. So let me try to focus on the first element, maybe. So when I just click on that first element, I'm able to see that the background color has turned to yellow because I have already triggered the focus in event. And then I use the tab key. You can see that the focus is lost so that the background color turns to light green shown here. Okay. So when I just click on the other one, you can see that the list element 2 is focused now. So it turns to yellow. And when I leave the focus of it, you can see that it turns to light green. Okay. So when I use the mouse as well, I can do the same effect. So when I click on uh, list 3, you can see that list 3 has turned to yellow. And when I just uh, click on list, list 1, for example, you can see that list 3 has turned to light green because it already lost its focus. And now when I just click on list 1, this one becomes the element being focused. So it turns to yellow back. Okay. So when I click on list 4, you can see that this one has turned to light green because it already lost its focus. And at the same time, um, list 4 has got the focus. Okay. So you can see that we can do some kind of event delegation by using the focus in and the focus out events. Okay. So th this video has already talked about the way to do focusing and blurring in JavaScript. We can use the focus and blur events, or we can use the focus and blur methods, like those methods shown here, okay? And then in order for all the elements to have the ability to be focused or blurred, we can just set the tab index on each of those elements. And we have to take care of the ordering of the tab indices. So for the tab index, it starts with 1, and then from 2 to 3 and so on. And we have two specific indices called 0 and minus 1 to serve some other specific purposes. Okay. And of course, we can understand that the focus and blur events do not bubble. In order to do event delegation, we can use the focus in and focus out events instead. This is the end of the video. If you have any questions about my video, please leave your questions on the comment section below the video. If you like this video, please give me a like and please subscribe to my channel. Thank you for watching.